flying on the airlines and listening to the airlines announcements and trying to pretend to ourselves that the language they're using is really English. <laughs> Doesn't seem like it to me. Whole thing starts when you get to the gate. First announcement. We would like to begin the boarding process. <laughs> Extra word, process, not necessary. Boarding is enough. We'd like to begin the boarding. Simple, tells the story. People add extra words when they want things to sound more important than they really are. Boarding process sounds important. It isn't. It's just a bunch of people getting on an airplane. People like to sound important. Weathermen on television talk about shower activity. Sounds more important than showers. I even heard one guy on CNN talk about a rain event. I swear to God. He said, Louisiana's expecting a rain event. I thought, holy shit, I hope I can get tickets to that. Emergency situation. News people like to say, police have responded to an emergency situation. No, they haven't. They've responded to an emergency. We know it's a situation. Everything is a situation. Anyway, as part of this boarding process, they say, we would like to pre-board. Well, what exactly is that, anyway? What does it mean to pre-board? You get on before you get on? That's another complaint of mine. Too much use of this prefix pre. It's all over the language now. Pre this, pre that. Place the turkey in a preheated oven. It's ridiculous. There are only two states an oven can possibly exist in, heated or unheated. Preheated is a meaningless fucking term. It's like pre-recorded. This program was pre-recorded. Well, of course it was pre-recorded. When else are you going to record it? Afterwards? That's the whole purpose of recording, to do it beforehand. Otherwise, it doesn't really work, does it? Pre-existing, pre-planning, pre-screening. You know what I tell these people? Pre-suck my genital situation. And they seem to understand what I'm talking about. Anyway, as part of this pre-boarding, they say, we would like to pre-board those passengers traveling with small children. Well, what about those passengers traveling with large children? Suppose you have a two-year-old with a pituitary disorder. You know, a six-foot infant with an oversized head. The kind of kid you see in the National Enquirer all the time. Actually, with a kid like that, I think you're better off checking him right in with your luggage at the curb, don't you? Well, they like it under there. It's dark. They're used to that. About this time, someone is telling you to get on the plane. Get on the plane. Get on the plane. I say, fuck you. I'm getting in the plane. In the plane. Let evil Knievel get on the plane. I'll be in here with you folks in uniform. There seems to be less wind in here. They might tell you you're on a non-stop flight. Well, I don't think I care for that. No, I insist that my flight stop. Preferably at an airport. It's those sudden unscheduled cornfield and housing development stops that seem to interrupt the flow of my day. Here's one they just made up. Near miss. When two planes almost collide, they call it a near miss. It's a near hit. A collision is a near miss. Look, they nearly missed. Yes, but not quite. They might tell you your flight has been delayed because of a change of equipment. Broken plane. <laughs> tell me to put my seat back forward. <laughs> well, I don't bend that way. If I could put my seat back forward, I'd be in porno movies. <laughs> then they mentioned carry-on luggage. First time I heard carry-on, I thought they were going to bring a dead deer on board. I thought, what the hell do they mean with that? Don't they have the little TV dinners anymore? Then I thought, carry on, carry on, there's going to be a party. People are going to be carrying on on the plane. 
Well, I don't care for that. I like a serious attitude on the plane, especially on the flight deck, which is the latest euphemism for cockpit. <laughs> Can't imagine why they wouldn't want to use a lovely word like cockpit, can you? Especially with all those stewardesses going in and out of it all the time. There's one. There's a word that's changed, stewardess. First it was hostess, then stewardess, now it's flight attendant. You know what I call him? The lady on the plane. <laughs> Sometimes it's a man on the plane now. That's good, equality. I'm all in favor of that. Sometimes they actually refer to these people as uniformed crew members. Uniformed. As opposed to that guy sitting next to you in the Grateful Dead t-shirt and the fuck you hat. <laughs> Who's working on his ninth little bottle of Kahlua, I might add. As soon as they close the door to the aircraft, that's when they begin the safety lecture. I love the safety lecture. This is my favorite part of the airplane ride. I listen very carefully to the safety lecture, especially that part where they teach us how to use the seat belts. Imagine this, here we are, a plane full of grown human beings, many of us partially educated, and they're actually taking time out to describe the intricate workings of a belt buckle. Place the small metal flap into the buckle. Well, I asked for clarification at that point. <laughs> Over here, please. Over here. Yes, thank you very much. Did I hear you correctly? Did you say place the small metal flap into the buckle or place the buckle over and around the small metal flap? <laughs> I'm a simple man. I do not possess an engineering degree, nor am I mechanically inclined. Sorry to have taken up so much of your time. Please continue with the wonderful safety lecture. <laughs> Seatbelt. High-tech shit. <laughs> the safety lecture continues. The next thing they do, they tell you to locate your nearest emergency exit. I do this immediately. <laughs> I locate my nearest emergency exit, and then I plan my route. You have to plan your route. It's not always a straight line, is it? Sometimes there's a really big fat fuck sitting right in front of you. Well, you know you'll never get over him. I look around for women and children, midgets and dwarfs, cripples, war widows, paralyzed veterans, people with broken legs, anybody who looks like they can't move too well. The emotionally disturbed come in very handy at a time like this. You might have to go out of your way to find these people, but you'll get out of the plane a lot goddamn quicker, believe me. I say, let's see, I'll go around the fat fuck, step on the widow's head, push those children out of the way, knock down the paralyzed midget, and get out of the plane where I can help others. I can be of no help to anyone if I'm lying unconscious in the aisle with some big cocksucker standing on my head. I must get out of the plane, go to a nearby farmhouse, have a Dr. Pepper, and call the police.